Well, day two. Sometimes it can be harder when there's less breeze than when there's more breeze. And I think today was one of those days because it was so tricky. It was up and down and, and puffy and, and some, it was plain in conditions a lot of the time. But goodness, you had to be in the gusts. And uh, it was really tricky, really tricky, but great fun. Another absolutely spectacular day on the water. Absolutely loved it. Now, the person I want to go and talk to is well, one of the locals. Well, he talks like a local anyway. Keith Bedbro, who's been in this class for quite some time, and he's often at the end of the fleet that I don't really get to see very often. And he's over here, he's telling some tall stories. He's busy telling tall stories. It was this big, yeah, we exactly. went that far, yeah. we were this far ahead. Yeah, that's it, yeah. <laughs> Keith, how was your day? Uh, it was good, it's tough, really tough out there, I think. Um, but yeah, we're pretty just keeping our consistency going. So another two top 10 results, quite happy with that. Um, so we've still got some work to do downwind, I would say, on a downwind speed. Uh, going really well upwind. Tricky day though, um, you know, so. It was really tricky, yeah. wasn't it? I think that was harder than yesterday. Yeah, yeah, I'd, I'd agree. Um, again, I would say the fleet was generally tending to go left upwind and we, we felt a couple of times going out right. There was a few shifts and the tide maybe wasn't playing quite as much until until the last race, last beat or last two beats. Um, so I think there was yeah, there were gains to be made right. Um, but downwind was tough. Down, downwind I was all about staying in, the, staying in the puffs or not. <laughs> so, it was, exactly. Yeah, yeah. You could guarantee that if you were in one, someone else would be in a bigger one. Yeah, and looking at, uh, I think Steve played a, he had a couple of really good runs, just jibing at the right time, staying in the pressure, you know, going from gust to gust. And I think that's the key to keeping it going, going downwind. So It does seem uh, to be. Yeah. You know, we discovered that it's also quite a good idea to have a mental note of how heavy people are. Because mm. we kept looking at one boat going, they're always in the gust, they're always planing. And then when yeah. they came past us, they weigh the, the same as a bag Is of crisps. Is this where I've got to breathe in at this point? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my uh, summer weight loss programme hasn't maybe gone as well as it should have done. But I'll take that, mate. I'll take that. Uh, you know, great day, great racing. Really it great. Was. I thought the, the race team did a fantastic yeah. job as, again. Yeah. And what's not to like about North yeah, Berwick, Matt? Hey, you know, come on. It's, just, it's superb. <laughs> it's lovely. Now, your helmsman, Jamie, here. Let's just ask Jamie about... What was, um, well, is he telling the truth? Yeah, I think uh, <laughs> everything Keith said was the real truth comes spot out, on. Yeah. I think it was interesting as the breeze died away towards the end of the day, I think the tide definitely played more of a factor on the upwind. Um, and then, yeah, as Keith said, downwind, it was all about staying in the pressure. And uh, yeah, Mr. Rooster did a really good job of connecting that downwind and getting some good places. But yeah, upwind, we feel good. We feel, we feel fast. I think there was definitely shift that gains to be made on some of the shifts upwind. I think a lot of people stayed left and it ended up being a bit of a formal leader and um, so we just sort of tried to you know play our own game and I think it worked quite well. And who who got it um, today I think we saw didn't Sam and um, Sam and Chris won the first race is that right this morning I think they did with the Dayglo green kite. Yeah, a bit can't tell you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can't remember. Oh, so it's not just us today, no, no, no. <laughs> then. Yeah. Okay, well we'll go and find them yeah, and, not see the and find out. No, okay, <laughs> good. Well, good to hear that you had a good day. Absolutely. Yeah, thanks, guys. Keep it up. And do you know one of the great things about doing this is I get to edit this tonight, and I hear what you all say again and again and again, and eventually <laughs> it goes notes. in. Yeah, yeah. It goes in. Just, well, I hope it does. North Berwick's anyway. great. Just remember that. Oh, yeah, that's yeah, right. Yeah, that's yeah, the key yeah. message. Uh, do you know I, that's a bit I hadn't forgotten. Yeah. Excellent. Great. <laughs> okay. Cheers, guys. Good right. stuff. See you right, later. See ya. Now I would like to find Jacob because I don't know if Jacob's here, but I can't see him at the moment. Uh, it would be good to see him because he's sort of uh, leading Silver Fleet, but he's not here at the moment. So let's go and have a little look up here, see who's up here to go and pester. Uh, oh, I think we'll talk to, let's talk to Chris. If they don't know who won the first race, I bet Chris does. I'm sure they were leading. Right, Chris. Now we've come for some 
verification of the results. Okay. Yes, because we think you were pretty far up. How did you get on this morning? I uh, won the first one this morning. I thought you did, yes. Uh, not so good this afternoon. Um, and then we got stuck underneath the Robertsons, coming off the start line, pushed us off, and then before we know it, we're about 10th around the windward mark, and the little less breeze today, we just kind of didn't have the oomph to sort of get past everyone downwind like we had done the first three races. It's so. tricky when you get stuck in the traffic, isn't it? <laughs> Very <laughs> tricky again. It's Yesterday, it was a, if it seemed a bit simpler, it was just hit the left-hand corner, up the beat, tack across, and sort of very much boat speed was today. The wind had shifted sort of 10, 15 degrees, and that then made it shifty. Um, and I think there were sort of 15, 20 degree shifts and pressure at the same time. So if you got it right, you could make leaps, and if you didn't, you didn't. So <laughs> <laughs> who won the um, who won the second race? Do you know? Uh, it looked like the cockerels won it to us. We thought there was a red kite going over over right. the line first, with maybe Chris Eames second. Right. Good. So, well, that's going to mix the overall results up for the moment, isn't it? Yeah. Um, we're happy that there's a discard now. <laughs> yeah. Well, I thought something must have been going wrong with uh, for you guys because we could see you. <laughs> <laughs> and that doesn't normally happen. <laughs> but anyway, there we go. Well, there we go. Tricky old day. Absolutely. I'm glad even the rock stars found it tough. <laughs> Otherwise, I would have been a bit despondent. No, no, it was uh, yeah, very taxing today. So yeah. we'll, we'll see what tomorrow brings. Yeah, indeed. Good stuff. Um, All right. Cheers. Thanks, Dr. Chris. Cheers. Well, there you go. So, two days in, and what we thought we knew, maybe we don't. I think the points have been shuffled around a little bit. Anyway, it's all four races is too much for me to figure out unless I go and have a look at a spreadsheet. That's what I'll go and do in the bar. See you later. Now, one of the great things about this event is that every day there's a prize giving where we get to celebrate those who've muscled their way to the front of the fleet. But if the truth be known, one of the other reasons that people turn up is for the Duckham's Award, for those that didn't quite get it right. Got a bit warm, had to cool off, went for a swim, then realised they were in sequence and about half a mile downwind of the line. So um, we're a minute and a half late to cross the start line for race two. Um, but I'm hoping that Paul and Jane McMeekin are here all the way from Ireland after attempting to, you know, take a new approach to light weighting. You know, bungs are heavy. You want to leave them on the beach um, and sailed out today with no bung in to race one. So any sign of Paul and Jane McMeekin? <laughs> right. Oh, well, okay. If anyone knows where they are, there's some pintles of shame with their name on it. So. <laughs> Thanks very much. Oh, well. Seems like not everybody wants to turn up for their Duckham's Award. Anyway, whatever. It's not the end of this. We'll be back tomorrow. But in the meantime, it's time for Paella. See you later.